Hey team, welcome back to the channel. I'm a million dollars in debt and it's not from going out and buying two new R34 Skylines. There's a very good reason. I want to tell you how and why. So in this video I want to talk about what debt is and how it's classified, what different types of debt there are, and how we can use debt to our advantage or alternatively how we can get used by debt if we're not careful. There's a lot to talk about so let's hop right into it. Okay so let's talk about what is debt. If you jump on Google this is the definition that you're gonna find. Something, typically money, that is owed or due. So, if we pause and think about this, a debt can be a financial obligation, it can also be a personal obligation where you owe someone something. But in the context of personal finance, we're always going to be thinking about this as some kind of monetary obligation wherein you have gotten some benefit by borrowing money from someone, some institution, and you owe them this money back. So what types of debt are there? There's really two major classifications of debt that we want to talk about and think of. There is secured debt and then there is unsecured debt. A secured debt has some kind of asset tied to it. So if you think about your uh, home, if you have a mortgage, your home is securing that loan. If you default on the loan, then your home is what's going to be taken back by the bank. It'll be foreclosed in order to repay that obligation. Same thing with an auto. If you have a vehicle and that's securing a loan where you've borrowed money to purchase a vehicle, if you default on your payments, they will repossess the vehicle and try and sell it to recoup their money. So that's a secured loan. There is security attached to that loan so that the lender is more secure in giving you the money because there's an asset behind it that can be reclaimed and resold in the event of a default. Now on an unsecured loan, you're going to find no collateral. There's no security. So because of that, the bank or lending institution is typically going to charge a higher rate here. So if you think about this, it kind of makes sense. In a secured loan, if you have something backing up that loan liability, then you can charge a lower rate because you feel secure as a bank that you will get your money back one way or another in some way, shape, or form. So these secured loans typically carry rates of, say, uh, a home or an auto might dip down into the twos all the way up to say maybe in the five percent range thereabouts depending on your credit and sometimes if you have really good credit a uh, auto manufacturer might even offer a zero percent interest rate loan so that's kind of the power of having that security there on an unsecured loan you would think of these like a personal loan or your credit card has no security behind it these typically carry higher rates. An unsecured loan from your bank or credit union might carry a 7 to say 15 percent rate whereas a credit card typically has an interest rate of 20 plus percentage points. So that's how you can kind of classify all major loans either secured or unsecured. So when we think about it what are the types of things that you want to borrow money for which are good which are maybe a little bit more frivolous. When you think about these secured loans, these are typically the things where you would think, oh, this is more of sort of a core life thing that I really need. Having a mortgage that is securing uh, your home purchase, this can be a really good thing. Same with a uh, purchase of a vehicle. If you need transportation to be able to get to your work, to be able to see family, things like that, it's going to be really important for you. So these are typically your, your core things that are going to be really crucial. On the unsecured side, typically these things can be a little bit more frivolous, whether it's trips or funding your Amazon purchases. 
those classifications really differentiate what types of purchases we're making. These obviously aren't the only kinds of debt. There are medical debts that people have to incur because of health issues and it's not in their control, but if you don't have the funds available, if you don't have money saved, or if it's something that's really catastrophic that's just outside of anybody's budget, you have to go into debt to be able to pay for those. So this medical debt is typically unsecured debt. And this can be a big contributor to bankruptcies, one of the leading causes, because it can be so astronomical that people just can't repay it. So it's a big challenge, but that's not being frivolous. It's not running up a credit card. It's something to, to keep you alive. And so it's a different kind of debt because it's crucial to be able to have that, to be able to, to keep you going. Another kind of debt that often gets talked about in the news is student loans. So student loan debt is also unsecured, but it is a little bit different because unlike some of these other types of debt, it doesn't go away in the instance of a bankruptcy. So it can be very dangerous because if you run up a lot of bills on student loans, it's gonna to continue to follow you throughout your life. Now with uh, student loans, there's lots of options out there um, to refinance, especially right now, as it's a, a definite hot button issue with the amount of student loan debt outstanding in the country. Business debt's another kind of debt that we can enter into that is going to be beneficial in that it gives us the opportunity to create something and to be able to have a business that can generate income for us and generate a positive impact on both the economy and our country. So is debt bad? Is it really the enemy? Well, no. Debt is like a, a chainsaw. It's a tool. If you use it properly, then it's going to be able to help you accomplish what you set out to do. But in the wrong hands, looking at you, Leatherface, um, it can be a deadly and dangerous thing. And so what we have to do is make sure that we understand when we should be using debt and when we should be avoiding it. We don't want to be running up tons of credit card debt because of its nature of being unsecured at high rates, it's going to continue to pile up. And as that balance isn't paid down, then it continues to grow and grow and grow until it becomes unmanageable. So we need to be able to make sure that if we do utilize credit cards, which in themselves are tools, uh, that we're keeping those balances paid off. But in the instance of, say, a mortgage, debt can be a powerful tool to be able to get you something that is going to have its value and something that you can have appreciation on in the future in, in the instance of a home. So we've seen the market crash about a decade ago and we've seen the ripple effect there. There's been a lot of fundamental changes to the economy and throughout time real estate has been a great investment and it does give you a secure place to put your money if you invest in rental properties you can have passive sources of income and within your own primary residence you're gaining equity that you can in turn borrow against at a future date and also there's tax benefits for home ownership. So now let's get to the brass tax. How am I a million dollars in debt? Let's look at the numbers. So let me break it down for you. I have three homes with three mortgages. So let's look at home number one. So home number one has a mortgage with a balance right now of about $115,000. Home number two has a mortgage with a balance of about $305,000. And home number three has a mortgage with a balance of about $475,000. So if we do the math here and add this up, So about $900,000, which is close to a million. So here's the deal. We have these mortgages on these homes and these homes provide us with income. They provide appreciation. And then also one of them is our primary residence. The story that you don't see here 
is this is just the liability portion. And this is why debt can often be construed as being purely a bad thing. This is a big number to be in debt. However, the thing you're not seeing is the asset side that offsets this. So in the video where we talked about net worth, remember assets minus liabilities is net worth. So now let's say what's the asset side here. And this is where this really comes into play and how this debt can be really powerful. So house number one is currently worth about $200,000. Just looked it up on Zillow. House number two is currently worth 370. House number three is worth about 525. The house right next to it is on sale and is going to sell for that. So when you look here, we can add these up. So now we can see the total that offsets this. So. Here, $1,095,000 offset that to the $895,000 and that is an addition to net worth of $200,000. This is really key because this is a big number in liabilities but there's assets here that go with these and these assets help generate this net worth. When I started here, the net worth number was zero, right? I had no properties. But in acquiring these properties, this number has been able to grow quite a bit. The important thing to understand about debt is leverage. The amount of money that I put in to get to this number is nowhere near this big. So when I purchased this home for $145,000, I only put down 5%. When I purchased this home for 325, I only put down 5%. When I purchased this home for 500, I only put down 5%. And by doing that, you're able to lever your money and have outsized returns relative to the amount that you put in. So whenever I get a new mortgage or acquire a new property, if possible, I only put 5% down so that I can take advantage of that leverage. And the other thing too is I have lived in each one of these houses which has allowed me to do that. I moved in here and then I moved in here and then recently moved in to our newest home. So this is really key to understand is that by going in as a primary residence I'm able to put only 5% down and acquire these properties. Whereas if you're an investor looking to just buy a home as an investment property, they typically want to see a 20% down payment, which is very steep and you don't want to have to put that much in. Again, keep in mind, outsized returns due to leverage. Debt in and of itself is not a bad thing, but it really comes down to how we use it. You should use debt as a tool to increase your net worth and your income. If you take on debt and it does neither of those two things, it isn't a good debt. If you're going out to buy expensive handbags or watches or cars or primary residences or things like that that, that aren't going to eventually generate some kind of return for you, then those aren't good purchases. That's not to say that there aren't things like that that can appreciate in value and generate yourself some income or create a return for you. But we should be careful. If this kind of content is helpful for you, make sure to like this video and leave me a comment and let me know what you want to hear about. Is debt a topic that is going to be beneficial for you? Or do you want to learn more about how to increase your own revenue? Tell me what I can do to help you in your financial journey. Make sure to check out some of the related videos in the comments that might be helpful for you. And I'll see you next time.